Hey everyone, this is Tiki from Etsy Table Studio with my creative year for the month of May. Um, I have a project that I'm actually going to do in front of you, a doodle. And I don't usually doodle a lot in front of people because it takes some time, but I will fast forward through it. And it's going to be a small thing, so maybe it won't take too long. So I'm going to tell you what my muse is. As of late, I have been playing in my Dilusions journal that was gifted to me by Peg Robinson. And it's kind of skinny because I took the I finished the black one out and now I, I had to order a new one and I got the dot dot one. But what I've been showing on Instagram for those of you who belong to my Instagram, this will be just old news. Some old some new. But I have been playing around with repetitive whole page repetitive patterns patterns and opti art. Now I like the optical illusion art. Some people, it makes them nauseous, so let me tell you, this is going to be full of that kind of stuff, so get ready. <laughs> um, at, I don't know why, but I've been looking at a lot of uh, people doing it on Instagram, and I just thought, well, it can't be that stinking hard. Well, it's not, but it just takes a lot of time and a lot of ink. So here's the first two. Here are the second two that people have seen on Instagram. This is just little boxes. There's nothing colored in, nothing very plain, just a little box on top of a little box. Now, I know this sounds silly, but this was easier than this. Because this, you try not to make them look all the same. And it was kind of hard. I mean, I really had to think about what I was doing when I did this one. This, not so much. This was done with a, a template. Template, however you pronounce it that I always keep, you know, I've said in past videos, I keep tucked back in here. And then colored in mostly with a black, I think I used, did I use Micron for this one? I don't know. And then I used the uh, Faber-Castell black brush pen to fill in the, um, the outsides. But I can't remember how I did these guys. I think I used a Micron pen on these. Here is another one that has been seen on Instagram. This one is a little different than this one, see? Bigger circles, more intersections, and then no color in the black, because by then I was exhausted. <laughs> These are new. I saw this one on uh, Pinterest and I loved it. So, I, And the one on Pinterest, it only had like, you know, one large one. But I decided that wasn't good enough. You know me, I have to overdo. So I put one, two, three, four, five of them on here. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, six. Oops, should have been five. Odd numbers are better. But I had a good time making it. Then I couldn't stop with that. So I went to two more things. Now, this one's really hard to see. I probably should have shaded a little darker. These are hearts. Maybe if I hold it up, you can see it better. There you go. You see the heart? There's lots of hearts on that page because, you know, I can't stop at one. It's got to be 50 or 100. There are the Opti hearts. Then there's this one. And I messed up because I didn't count the things right. So I decided that I'm going to show you how easy it is. And I was very intimidated by these really intimidated by these. That's why I don't do them often because I thought, oh, I can't do this. So the best thing to do when you can't, when you think you can't do something is to dive headfirst into it and give it a shot. And then afterwards, if you don't like it, that's cool. You tried and you move on. But I had to try this because I had to get over my fear of trying something outside my comfort zone. All right, so have my bag that I carry into the living room every time I do any kind of things in the delusions. These two are a package deal. You don't see usually one without the other. Um, I think Gina Ahrens gave me this one, and there's another one that I have just like it that she also gave to me. I love them both dearly. So in here, pencil with a cute little eraser on the end, a paper stub, and a pencil sharpener. They go inside here because I do use them just in case they're there. Uh, I have Signo white pen. I have a jelly white pen, a black jelly, 
a Faber-Castell brush pen, all uh, different brands of, well, no, there's no microns in here. <laughs> different brands of pens. This one is the Art Line Drawing System. I've shown these before. Then this one is a Unifine pen, and these ca all came in sets. There's the Faber-Castell. And then, I love these things, the Cigna Uniball DX Black Pens. These have given me a doodle injury. <laughs> it's from all that head bending down and crooking my neck and sitting on the couch doing these for hours at night watching TV because I'm obsessed with finishing them. Uh, I also have two white charcoal pencils for, and they're by Generals Charcoal White. They're for any black work that I do because eventually, you know, I, I want to get rid of it. So there's that. And then the rest of them are the various partners to these. So that's what's in there. And then I also have a quilling ruler. I have more than one of them, so I decided to stick one in this because it fit perfectly. So I'm going to use this today. The Uniball Black. And where's the other one? I just had it. And the Faber-Castell. And that should... Oh, yeah, and then I'll use the pencil stuff later. All right, so I'm going to zoom you in, and I'm going to fast-forward through this because this is just takes a little bit of time. But I want you to see how it's done because I don't usually doodle in front of people. I don't know why. It's because I'm always doing it while I'm watching TV sitting on my keister, which is getting bigger the more art I do, evidently. All right, so here's where I'm going to shut it off, and then I'll come back and fast-forward through the whole process, then talk at the end.
Okay, so I finished. And let me explain to you why I did it the way I did. It's because of this one here that I don't draw in pen anymore when doing this kind of stuff because of this right here. This should have been you know every other one and I had the wrong amount here so this time what I did was I used a pencil and the ruler and I wrote over under over under over under and did it all the way around so that it would be even this time instead of the doubles in a row which it's not supposed to be so that's why I don't do it in pen to begin with anymore and then I went back over it with the pen over the pencil lines. And as you can see, it really didn't make any difference, right? Um, after I finished coloring in all the black, the, the middle's kind of sloppy, but you get the drift of it as you go out. Because I think you're mostly drawn to this, not what's going on in the middle. I could darkly shade it so you really can't tell either way, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so then... After I got done doing the black, then I took the pencil and just did it on the outside. And my pencil is flat tipped. It is not a sharp pencil. Although you could use, you know, go like this, which is what I learned when I was in art school um, for a hot 10 minutes. You can do it like this. You can do it really dark, really light. Makes no difference. And then take the paper stump or stub, whatever you call it, want to call them, and you just go over it. But be sure you get a number two pencil. Don't use a number one because a number one doesn't give you a good enough contrast and shading. So you need you just take the paper stump and rub along the, the, the graphite, and then it just kind of smooths it out. You could have I could have left it with just rubbing the pencil up and down, but I like that subtle, smooth look to it for the shading. And what happens is, this right here gets so loaded with graphite, sometimes you don't even have to do anything with the pencil. You, it's very subtle, but there we go. Because it's so loaded on the paper, it carries it on for a while. So you don't have to go real deep. If you just keep doing this enough times, it picks it up on the stump or the stub. And then you just keep rubbing and rubbing till you get the amount of shading that you really like the best. And there you go. So doing this kind of art, now it's hard to see the depth here, but doing this kind of art really is about taking it one small step at a time. And it, it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. That's weird. I enjoy doing it. It's a lot of fun. And I thought I would be really afraid. And as it turned out, it's really not that big of a deal. Some of it still confounds me. Some of it still, I'm not sure I understand or see the, the depth and all that kind of stuff in it, the illusion. But when you look at it flat, it's fine. But when you add the shading, I think that makes a ton of difference in the picture itself. Okay, so that's it for me for my creative year for my muse. And my muse this month was Optical Illusion Art or um, Opti Art, whatever you want to call it. You can look it up on Pinterest. There's a million different things on there that you can use. You can buy books. There's YouTube videos, websites, blogs, vlogs, whatever you want to call them. Millions of ways and different patterns to use. I've already started the... I want you to see that. Um, I've already laid the foundation for yet another thing. But until my back gets better and my neck strain is gone from doing all of these others, I'm going to cool it with the OptiArt and coloring in with the ink pen because it really does start to cause a lot of neck strain. So don't overdo it, guys. Alrighty, so I will see you guys next month. Bye.